All right, Titans, thanks for joining us here. We're going to go ahead and go over uh, page 363 uh, to 365, the homework solutions for this evening. Uh, this video will give you an opportunity to get some reteaching with any of the questions uh, that you're struggling with. Uh, so let's start off this video by just going over the solutions first. Uh, number 6, the answer is no solution. Number 10 is negative 2, negative 8. Number 20 is negative 2, positive 2. Number 31, you should add a graph uh, that looks like the one we have displayed here on the uh, slide. And then for number 37, you should have had an answer of 15 nickels and 28 quarters. That's 15 nickels and 28 quarters. I will now go uh, problem by problem through uh, the homework assignment. Once again, you can fast forward, rewind, pause as needed uh, to get to the answers uh, that you would like to see more of. All right, we will begin by going over question number six. Now, number uh, six says solve by graphing. Now, I know when you guys see this, you're like, ooh, you know, I want to do elimination method because the x's cancel or the y's cancel. Uh, but the directions say to solve it by graphing, so we want to produce a graph that will lead us to our solution. Now, on question number six, we want to put both of these into slope-intercept form. And that seems to be the concept that students are struggling with. So let's go ahead and review together how to put an equation in slope-intercept form. The first equation is negative x plus 2y is equal to 1. So to put this in slope-intercept form, I'm going to go ahead and take negative x and move it over. When it changes sides, it changes signs. Now nothing else moves, so nothing else changes. 2y stayed 2y. 1 stayed 1. Now I would divide everything by 2 in order to isolate the variable. So it would be y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. So to graph that, I would have a y-intercept of 1 half, which is just, uh, excuse me, is right above the origin there at 1 half. And then I mark off a slope of up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And then I can go ahead and draw that line. Okay? Now to put the second uh, equation into slope-intercept form. It's the same concept. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I go ahead and I take x and I move it over and x becomes negative 1x. I then go ahead and divide to isolate y. I divide everything by negative 2. And now I have y equals 1 half x minus 1.5. So I'd be down here at 1.5, and I'd have that same slope, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So when I draw my line, as you can see, they're parallel. So if they're parallel, they do not intersect, so there's no solution, because the answer is where they intersect. So if they don't intersect, no solution. All right, we will go ahead and solve number 10 next. Uh, number 10, the directions say solve each equation or solve each system of linear equations by using the substitution method. So I'm going to use the substitution method. Now the substitution normally, I shouldn't say normally, but a lot of the times what you'll see on step one is that there's already a variable isolated. There is not a variable isolated in step one, but we could easily isolate a variable. And the easiest variable to isolate here would be x because it has a coefficient of one. So if we take negative y, and move it over, we have x equals, now that negative y when it changes sides, it's going to change to a positive y plus 6. Now step 2 is to go ahead and plug that into the other equation. So the other equation that I haven't used yet is the bottom one. So I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to take x out because I know what x equals and I'm going to plug in y plus 6. So it's 2 times y plus 6 minus 4y is equal to 28. Now to solve this equation, I go ahead and I distribute. So I'm going to have 2y plus 12 minus 4y equals 28. Okay, that first step was to go ahead and distribute. Then I combine like terms, 2y and negative 4y. They're on the same side, so go ahead and combine them to make negative 2y. So negative 2y plus 12 equals 28. I would subtract 12 from each side. And I would be left with negative 2y is equal to a positive 16. 
I would then divide both sides by a negative 2. And that leaves me with y equals a negative 8. That's the first half of my answer. Then the next step is to go ahead and take the equation from step 1, which is x equals y plus 6, and plug in the new value that we have just learned. And that's that y is actually negative 8. What's negative 8 plus 6? Negative 2. So that leaves me with the solution of negative 2, negative 8. Now I get the question a lot, well once I get that negative 8, where do I plug it in? You can technically plug it in anywhere. You could plug it into this, uh, the first equation, x minus y equals 6. You could plug it into the second equation, 2x minus 4y equals 28. But the easiest place to plug it in is always that equation that you used in step 1. This is a reteaching example of the substitution method. Alright, the next example I will do from the homework assignment is number 20. Okay, Number 20 is asking us to solve this system by the elimination method. Now when you see the elimination method, you're hoping to be able to add the two equations together in order to eliminate a variable. Now I cannot go ahead and add these two equations together right now because there will not be a variable eliminated. If I add the x's, I get 1x. If I add the y's, I get 2y. That doesn't do me any good. That doesn't eliminate. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and multiply one or possibly both of the equations so that I can eliminate. In this case, you can get away with just multiplying one equation. On number 20, you can simply multiply the bottom equation by two. If you multiply the bottom equation, the whole thing by two, that will make the bottom equation become 6x minus 4y equals negative 20. The top equation, you can just leave that one the same. So you have negative 2x plus 4y is equal to 12. Now that we have opposites, we can add the two equations together. When I add the two equations together, I get 4x is equal to a negative 8. Then if I divide both sides by 4, x equals negative 2. Once you know your x value, you go ahead and plug that back in to any of the equations. Any equation works. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the top equation up there, which was negative 2x plus 4y equals 12. I now know that x is negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4y equals 12. So it would be 4 plus 4y equals 12. So I subtract 4 from each side, so it's going to be 4y equals 8. I divide by 4, and y equals 2. So my final answer is x, negative 2, y, positive 2. So my ordered pair is negative 2, positive 2. That's the elimination method. All right, that moves us on to question number 31. Question number 31, they want us to go ahead and solve each system of linear inequalities by graphing. So to solve this by graphing, I'm going to first graph the first inequality, then I'm going to graph the second inequality, and then the part where the shading overlaps is the solution. So to graph the first inequality, y is greater than or equal to 4. As we've talked about in class, if you have y and y only, y is always y'ing down. So I'm going to have a horizontal line at the y value of 4. Since it's a greater than or equal to sign, the line is solid. Anytime you have that or equal to sign, the line is going to be solid. Since it's greater than, I'm going to put the snow on top of the rooftop. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here to graph my second line. So I'm going to switch to um, red for the Huskers, my favorite football team. They're going to win the Gator Bowl. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph that second line. Okay. So I'm going to plot the y-intercept at a positive 1. And then I'm going to mark off that slope of positive 1. So up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And then I'm going to extend that line in both directions for accuracy. And that line, once again, is going to be solid because it has the or equal to with it. And since it's less than, I'm going to go ahead and put the snow under the rooftop. Okay. 
Now, the solution to a system of linear inequalities is that region in which there is an overlap between the two solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and switch colors again. This time I'll switch to green for the Green Bay Packers. And when I go ahead and graph this one, I'm going to shade the region where they overlap, which is this area right here, green. That's the answer. The green area is the place on the coordinate plane that holds the ordered pairs that are solutions to both inequalities. And the last problem we have for today is number 37. Number 37 is an application problem. Here it tells us that Samantha has a total of 43 quarters and nickels in her purse. If her change is worth $7.75, how many nickels and how many quarters does Samantha have? So we got to figure out what we're looking for first. X is going to be quarters. Y is going to be nickels. So that's what we're searching for, how many she has. Now the opening line says she has a total of 43 quarters and nickels in her purse. So the number of quarters she has plus the number of nickels she has equals 43. That's my first equation. Then it says that her change in her purse is worth $7.75. So that means the 25 cents for quarters plus the 5 cents for her nickels is going to equal $7.75. Now, we have the system set up. Once you have the system set up, you need to go ahead and then solve it by whatever method you choose. Now, graphing is not going to be a good choice here. Okay, You could use substitution or you could use elimination. If I were solving this, I would probably just go ahead and do it by uh, probably by elimination here. I would just multiply the top equation by negative 0.25. That's going to leave me with negative 0.25x plus negative 0.25 y equals ten dollars and seventy five cents that's what you get when you multiply the entire top by negative point two five now the bottom I'm gonna leave the same because that will go ahead and set me up to use the elimination method so now I can add the two together the x's are gone and I'm left with negative 0.20y is equal to, and that should have been a negative 10.75. If you didn't notice, I missed that sign right there. When I took 43 times a negative 0.25, that should have came out to be negative 10.75. So anyways, now when I go ahead and add those two together, that will leave me with a negative 3. Now to solve that equation, I can take negative 3 and divide it by negative 0 0.20 and that will give me my value for y and if you take negative 3 divided by negative point it gives you a solution of 15 so y equals 15 so that tells us right now that there's 15 of y which is 15 nickels now if there's 15 nickels how many quarters are there well if I were you I would just go ahead back and plug 15 in for nickels y and then so what number plus 15 is equal to 43? So we could solve that equation by subtracting 15 from 43, and that's where we get the answer of 28 nickels, or 28 quarters, excuse me. So x is equal to 28. Okay? All right, hopefully uh, going over these problems via the, uh, the video has helped you a little bit. And once again, if you have any questions, you can come in tomorrow morning. Uh, myself and Mr. Simpson are available uh, for extra help. Um, and then we'll take the test immediately in class on Friday. Thanks for your time, Titans. Have a good night. Made with DoodleCast Pro.